let's go take a tour of the RV and the upgrades we did. Our rig is a 2004 Jayco Granite Ridge 3100 SS. We upgraded the existing outdoor entertainment center with a new Bluetooth radio receiver. It has a 63 pound LP gas tank mounted on board. We added a four port T adapter to allow us to use an outdoor portable grill, also to allow us to connect a 20 pound portable propane tank. This RV came with a large Carefree of Colorado awning system. We made a cover for our awning out of some vinyl rain gutter material to help protect the awning while it's in the stored position. We installed some outdoor LED multicolor strip lighting under the awning. Here's some footage of the LED lights on at night. We installed a hitch mount motorcycle carrier with ramp to allow us to carry our 2015 Yamaha FZ09 motorcycle with us. The RV has a factory installed backup camera. We also installed a night owl security camera system that features night vision, motion detection, motion recording, uploading to the cloud, DVR recording, and remote viewing. The RV sewer hose. No RV is complete without it, but they are dirty and difficult to store. So we installed the Volterra Easy Hose Carrier that mounts underneath the RV that provides easy access to our sewer hose while keeping our storage bay sanitary. We upgraded the single 12 volt RV battery bank that was factory installed to a dual six volt golf car style battery system. This system still provides us with 12 volts but provides a larger amp hour storage capacity when we're dry camping. We installed this 3000 watt pure sine wave power inverter that allows us to power our 115 volt AC power outlets in the RV from the RV battery bank and the solar system. At the heart of our solar power system is the Renogy Commander 40 amp MPPT charge controller. The solar power system also consists of the panels and the remote metering system, which we'll take a look at shortly. We added this lockable fuel tank cover. We installed a dark limo style tinting on all of the RV windows to help keep the heat from the sun out. One thing we really like about this Class C RV that most Class C's don't have are these storage bays underneath. They're more like a Class A storage bay. Let's climb up and take a look at what we installed on the roof. We replaced the factory installed vent fans in both the bathroom and the bedroom with the fantastic vent fan. Here you can see the Max Air 2 vent cover that we installed over our fantastic fan vent in the bedroom. This allows us to operate the fantastic fan vent even while it's raining. We replaced the standard holding tank vent cap with the 360 siphon RV holding tank vent cap. This provides much better airflow as well as preventing odors from backing up inside the RV. We installed four 100 watt Renogy solar panels. We mounted the panels to the roof of the RV with custom brackets that allow us to tilt the panels toward the sun to make them more efficient. Since Yessi and I both work remotely from the RV, Wi-Fi and cellular connection are very important. So we installed a Wi-Fi directional antenna as well as a WeBoost omnidirectional antenna for cellular signal. These antennas capture and boost any available cellular or Wi-Fi signal and rebroadcast that boosted signal inside our RV on our own private Wi-Fi network. We mounted both of these antennas to the stock digital TV antenna. This allows us to control the direction the antennas are pointed from inside the RV. The RV roof has an EPDM rubber roofing system. Although the rubber roofing material is still in great shape, we elected to put a few new coats of Dicor's two-part EPDM rubber roof coating system as a preventative maintenance to reduce the chance of water intrusion. Now let's go take a look at the inside. Here's the control panel of the RV that houses the generator remote, the fresh water and holding tank level monitor, the onboard six gallon water heater tank electric and propane on and off switches, as well as the slide out control. We installed the Renogy MT50 solar remote monitor system that allows us to monitor the amount of incoming solar power 
as well as the voltage and current status of the battery bank. Our kitchen area has plenty of storage, a 1500 watt microwave, an Atwood three burner propane stove top and oven, and a dual bowl kitchen sink. We replace the aerator on the kitchen faucet with a 0.5 gallon per minute nozzle to help conserve water while maintaining good water pressure. The refrigerator can be set to run off of propane, battery power, or electricity, and has an auto sensing mode as well. We installed several 12 volt power ports and USB charging ports with an on and off switch in the living room to help keep all our devices charged. The thermostat controls both the air conditioning unit as well as the onboard furnace. Although the onboard furnace functions, it is very inefficient so we don't use it. We use a combination of an Olympian Wave 6 catalytic propane heater as well as an electric oil-filled radiator heater. To allow us to easily use our Olympian Wave 6 heater, we installed a Quick Connect LP gas port with shutoff valve in a central location to allow us to locate the heater in the front, middle, or rear of the RV. We recently did a remodel of our RV living area. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up in the top right corner now for you. We removed our dinette and jackknife sofa and replaced them with a dual reclining theater seat and a custom workstation. The recliners offer a lot more comfort than the dinette, and the workstation provides much needed desk space for our computer and recording gear and has a lot of storage underneath. We have a large cab over area behind the curtain that can function as an extra bed, but we use it for extra storage. We are considering turning this into a custom storage space in the near future. We replaced all of the interior 12 volt bulbs with LED bulbs for better efficiency, less heat, and better light. Our entertainment center area houses our TV, the router and network gear, the video security system, more 12 volt accessory and USB charging ports, the WeBoost cellular booster, the DVD player, and some extra storage. We replaced the original RV sink and faucet and added a backsplash to dress it up a bit. Here's the three-speed fantastic fan vent that replaced the original vent. We also replaced the original shower faucet and replaced the existing shower head with a low flow one gallon per minute shower head. We also added a wall mounted three chamber shampoo and body wash dispenser. In the bedroom we have lots of storage a queen-size bed with lots of storage underneath, the upgraded fantastic fan vent with Max Air 2 cover. On this wall we have the removable remote for the fantastic fan as well as the CO2 monitor. We have the day and night shades throughout the RV and more USB charging ports on the underside of the storage cabinets. Let's hop in the driver's seat and take a look. We have the factory installed viewfinder for the rear backup camera, as well as an updated Bluetooth radio receiver. We installed two level bubbles in the cab area, one for the left and right, and one for the front to back. This helps greatly to judge how many blocks we need under which tire to get the RV level. Well, that wraps up the RV tour and all the upgrades we've done thus far. We've got quite a few more projects planned for the future, and I'm sure we'll be sharing those with you as well. I put a link down below in the description of all the products we purchased to do these upgrades as well as our Amazon affiliate store link. If you want to support the channel and you don't really want to spend any extra money, you can just use our store link to purchase any product, whether it's RV related or not, and we'll get a small commission of that and it won't cost you anything extra, but you'll be helping to support our channel. So if you would like to, please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.